Today on Houston Life, the Strohs are coming. The Red Sox better get ready as Houston heads to the home of the Green Monster for Game 3. We have all the details live from Boston ahead of tonight's game. Plus, the Indian Film Festival of Houston kicks off later this week. Celebrating Indian cinema and culture, we'll have a preview of the event, plus the three films you don't want to miss. Then, shopping for a cause. How you can get discounts at more than 400 Houston retailers and support the American Cancer Society. Lauren Ooh. looks ready. And <laughs> Double Double Toil and Trouble. A look inside the magical shop in the Heights that's sure to cast a spell on you. All that happening today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Houston Live. It is Monday, October 18th. I'm Courtney Savala. Hi, Courtney. Hi, everybody. Such a beautiful day outside. We got to go for lunch and spend some time together. It was nice. We certainly did. We're all geared up with our Astros gear, repping our local businesses. I'm wearing a tee from State Line Designs. Yeah, I have some State Line Designs as well, which I'll wear tomorrow. This is Running Game, so check them out on Instagram, Running Game HTX. They have the best designs. People, I can't walk down the street wearing the shirt without getting 100 questions about where I got it's it. It's great stuff. Plus, Vanessa Richardson, she has another story about a local t-shirt, uh, a group of guys that some of the Astros players are really getting into as well, so we're going to have a little bit more coming up, but we're excited for the game. We got the candles lit. We're going to talk about that in just a second, but let's catch up on the weekend. I mean, you and I were texting during the games this during weekend. During the game. We'll get to that in just a moment. We always stress text each other whenever <laughs> the Astros are playing. Uh, we finally went someplace that I know is one of your favorites, Nice Winery. Oh, I love Have nice. you all been? It is right there at the Beltway and I-10. I can't believe how close it is. It's they have this brand new facility. I know COVID sort of messed a lot of things up, but Ryan, uh, one of the owners, there he is right there in the burgundy jacket, he walked us around. It's all organic. So those chickens there, they eat all the pests. It, I love it. it. Where the grapes are growing, it really was such a great day. And, you know, anytime we go to a winery, we always say, okay, we're not joining the club. Guess what? We join the club. We love it's those guys savings. and their stories. And, uh, yeah, we're probably going to do the chocolate tasting this week. And then uh, we did something yesterday at Fig and Olive. Our friends Lily and Julian just got back from France. That's Cyril on the left, Julian on the right. They both had birthdays, so we celebrated both of them. Julian on the right just got engaged to our Lily Jane. Courtney. Congratulations. So it's like a fairy tale, right? You go to France, you get engaged, you live happily ever after. So it was great to see them. We're very happy for them. And uh, we also actually had dinner with Yuval Michler, who is the owner of Texas Mattress Makers, and uh, our friend Susan and Scott, and Yuval's wife Michelle. The, Love that. The six of us had a nice dinner as well. Woo, well, that was a whirlwind. Like, I mean, a race. caught up. I know. Okay, so we did something really cool this weekend, too. For the first time, in almost two years to the day, got to see my dad. So my dad flew in from Chicago, uh, spent the weekend with us. It was so great. The last time we saw him was for his birthday, November 2019. His 90th. Yeah. And he got to meet his latest, his newest grandson of the group, a little hairier than That's everybody great. else. Yeah, he's never met he Oscar met before. Wow. So he, he enjoyed the time with the boys. Of course, we watched the game on Friday, which was super fun. Um, and he just loved Oscar. He just he was like, maybe I'm going to take him home with me uh, and, you know, check out Chicago. Um, we also were able to see the Van Gogh exhibit, which was really great. If you guys get a chance to go, please go. It's Beltway and I-10. It's fantastic. Uh, they do a great job with social distancing. And also, I got to see my girl, Rachel. Rachel McNeil. Oh, yeah, she was in town. She was in town this weekend, celebrated, kind of belated my birthday. Her birthday's on Friday, so we celebrated with her and her mom, Monica, and it was so great. And we were over at Bloom and Bee at Post Oak Hotel, a ladies' lunch, Beautiful. if you will. So we got dolled up, and it was lovely to catch up with, with both of them and see my dad as well. He's already back on his way home, but a quick visit. It was super fun, and he enjoyed having the games. I got to say, we got the candles lit, y'all. Because game three, it's it's got to happen. I mean, you, we want all the help from the universe we can possibly get. And I know that on Friday night during that first game, isn't it great how a baseball game can just turn on a dime and suddenly, you, well, you texted me, you're right. like, oh, it's a whole new ball game. A uh -huh. I mean, because when they were down, it was, oh, no. Games, yeah, I was, you know, I had my bottle of rosé and my tissue box. 
<laughs> but, Snickers. But soon I didn't need <laughs> any of those things. We opened a bottle that you gave me for Christmas. It was lovely. It was fantastic. It was great. I mean, it, we had so much fun. But, you know, they're playing, of course, at one of the oldest stadiums in MLB history. Fenway opened up in 1912, and it also is the home of the Green Monster, which is a hitter's park uh, because it's the sh one of the shortest distances for home runs. Oh, That's wow. why, you know, right-handed hitters, they love it. Yeah. Very cool. I know. All right. So listen, we're, we've got all things Astros today. They are in Boston, of course, to take on the Red Sox in game three. And that is where we find our friend Keith Garvin with a preview of this game. All of the history, of course, at Fenway, home of the Green Monster. Oh. This is awesome. We're ready for game three. Ready for the Astros to turn this around, Keith. Oh, we, sh we sure are, Courtney and Derek. Hello, happy Monday to you guys. Yes, we are in historic Fenway Park. I have to tell you, I love Minute Maid. I'm a huge baseball fan, but I have to say, Fenway Park is actually my favorite park in all of Major League Baseball. I've been to a few of the stadiums, and I really, really love this place because of the history. You guys mentioned the Green Monster. Take a look behind me. That thing right there where you see the Jim Beam and the MGM, that is the Green Monster. That is that wall that we want. The Astros hit a lot of homers over tonight. Uh, as you can see, on top of that, they actually have seats. So you can get, and those are coveted seats, you can get tickets and actually sit on top of the Green Monster. And so we hope uh, there are a lot of fans. We know it's going to be sold out. We hope there's going to be a lot of fans up there this evening so they can see and catch some of those Astros home runs. Below me, below us on the field, uh, you can see the Red Sox and the Astros are on the field. The Red Sox right now are in the batting cage taking batting practice. I mean, in the distance there, you can see the Astros, they're starting to warm up and they'll be taking uh, batting practice in just a short while. We've been talking to fans who are here. Fans obviously love their Astros uh, and we have a, a number of them who have traveled here to Boston to see them here at Fenway. Uh, we've talked to some of those. We're going to have, uh, you're going to hear from a lot of those coming up in our newscast coming up at 4 o'clock and 5 and 6 as well. We're here with Randy McElvoy, Roseanne Aragon as well and this is just a really great place to, to see baseball, to witness baseball and a really, really great place for our Astros to win. We know they want to get back on track after that, that very disappointing loss on Saturday. But, hey, we have the bats, and we have a really good team, a really great core of veterans who can put that loss to the side, and they can get ready for tonight. All they have to do is win one of these three games here in Boston, and the series will be coming back to Houston. So they are ready. We know they're ready. The fans here certainly are ready as well, guys. Oh, Keith, it's fantastic. I mean, the backdrop, I love that you're catching BP on there. And, I mean, let's just face it, the history that that stadium has again opened in 1912 we're ready for our bats to be hot tonight and ready for you guys to, to stay there and bring us all the coverage we'll see you in a bit thanks Keith. Rolls, and real quick let yeah. me show you what do you got can i show you yeah i got the astro socks baby yes you I do got the astro socks going i love we're it ready to roll i feel like you I got, should I got, I got orange and blue on my socks and in my heart and by the way in typical Keith fashion your, your shoes shoe are untied <laughs> I yeah, love it. You know, who, need, who needs to tie their shoes, you know? Come on. I think you should tuck and roll those jeans so everybody can see your socks, BTW. Oh, there we go. Okay, next live shot for sure. I love it. Okay, be careful on those stadium stairs, Keith. Be sure to tie those shoes before you go. Stair running up and down. Oh, I love him. Good, good, Very. good advice. Thank you. He is awesome. His or his shoes. I know, Gosh, but he is awesome. He always looks great, always repping our Strohs and, and the rest of our hometown team. I know that y'all want to take part in, you know, whether you're going to do this at home or maybe you want to get together with a group of people because the watch Astros party. watch party is happening tonight and all you need is one dollar. I think it's so great that it's only a buck. We do have info on clicktohouston.com in case you want to check it out. You've got to purchase that voucher to get into the stadium. The gates open at 5 p.m. You can see the info on your screen and of course the proceeds benefit the Astros Foundation. It really is better to watch the game with thousands of strangers. Yeah, Don't and friends. Agree? Yeah, yes, I think friends so too. and fans. So go out to the juice box and support our strauss. Absolutely. More on that coming up too. But still to come from for never to forever. Hmm. The A-list celeb that is changing her tune on marriage. Find out who got engaged over the weekend after the break. Okay, but for now, let's check in with Lauren Kelly, who is shopping for a pretty good cause. Hey Lauren, tough assignment, huh? Hey guys, I am not leaving here today inside the River Oak Shopping District right here at Francis Valentine and I've got all the details on the holiday shopping card benefiting the American Cancer Society where the toughest decision that you're going to have to make is these or these. I think the pink ones, Houston Life will be right back. What you know about me Just what the people say 
Welcome back to Houston Life. We love talking about relationships here on the show, don't we? We do. Okay. <laughs> I feel like just marriage and weddings in general is a topic that never gets old, right? And Absolutely. you may have heard that over the weekend, Kourtney Kardashian and Travis Barker, they got engaged. So congratulations to congratulations. the happy couple. Congratulations. There's After been a lot of swirling, some some rumors swirling because for a little bit. Because they've been dating for under a year, right? Right. And when she was married, actually she wasn't married before. She was with that guy Scott Disick. A lot of people know who he is, right? They were together for nine years. They have three kids together. They never got married. Um, it's funny because the internet is now worried about Scott. <laughs> like, is Scott okay? How is he doing? Um, Isn't he? He's already dating somebody else too. Uh, you know, you would you would know better than I do. I don't know, uh, to be totally honest. Yeah, I don't know a lot about uh, celebrity gossip. However, I do think when we look at marriage trends, you know, people seem to be getting married later on in life. Yes, and also people tend to just be together and not be married. And not be married. And people, I mean, people ask us, like, when we're getting married, not the two of us. <laughs> Oh, no, not us. Not us. But that would be interesting. Brandon gets the question. I get the question all the time. When are you guys getting married? When are you getting married? Don't forget. Remember, I'm certified. I can I can officiate. What about Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell, though? I mean, I think that there are people, maybe getting married would mess it all up. I don't know. You know those Look people who have been together years. for years, and then they get married, and they get divorced <laughs> like six months later? I don't think that's going to happen. Let's bring in Joe Sam with our question of the day. He's over here giggling. Yeah, y'all got me laughing. Slow and steady wins the race for yeah. people out there, no right? No rush, no rush. No rush. We want to hear from you guys. How did you know when you found the one? And we got those answers coming in right now. A lot of people like this question today. Danishi says, when he said he loves me more than garlic. He's a chef. Oh. <laughs> You know, we love He's some in. garlic. Some <laughs> garlic in there. Of course, Jennifer, she writes in, I was cleaning stables the day we met. Filthy, sweaty, stinky. Called me and asked me out the next day. Oh. Hope she took a shower. Oh, I love she it. went out. <laughs> and George Ann writes, I didn't know we were 11, but he knew. And guess what? It all worked out in the end. Oh, that is That's sweet. always good. From 11 years old. And it worked out. I love that. Mm, that's cute. Very so nice. sweet. Really, really great answers we have coming in. We want you guys to head over to the Houston Life Facebook page. Join that conversation. We'll share those comments a little bit later on in the show. Orlando, Brandon, when did y'all know they were the one? <gasps> I knew immediately. Yeah, I remember when you met Brandon. <laughs> I mean, Brandon. immediately. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I didn't, I, I don't know about knowing, but this is kind of a long explanation. But when I went home after our first date, I just knew he was different. You know, I thought, ooh, this part, we had so much to talk about. We had a marathon first date, so I've never had something like that before. Right. I did look at him on our anniversary and say, um, how did you put up with me for so long? Because it's 23 years that we've been together. Oh, that's you guys. We were married three years to the day. You got to give out some tips. Now, I need to know from you, Derek. I mean, how do you know so suddenly? I mean, was it love at first sight? I mean, what was it? Have you ever met even a friend, though? I mean, I, I don't think that these connections, sometimes the universe, just pull it's a crystal ball. A direct, yeah, kind of. <laughs> and I've had friendships like this, like my friend Liz Darby. There are a number of friends that I can point to in my life, well, you, you, where the moment you meet that person, it's like, you know what? I have known you all my life, but somehow we're just meeting right now. So when I met Brandon, it was like, oh, yeah, I already know you. There you are. I'm glad we could finally like <laughs> oh, meet. I Does love that it. sound totally out there? Oh. No. I mean, it's I, cool. no, I, I love it. it. Yeah, when it happens, it, happens. it makes sense. Sweet love. Sweet, Sweet love, love, baby. We can continue, Joe, this yes. conversation after the show. <laughs> sounds right. great. Thank you. I like your shirt, too, by the way. Very nice. Well, it is hard to believe the holidays are about two months away. I know, we haven't even hit Halloween yet, and now it's a great time to get a jump start on your gift shopping, oh, yeah. but before you head out and grab, you need the holiday shopping card, which is back with great discounts all over Houston. It's my favorite. And mind you, I buy it every single year. You can use the card at more than 475 Houston retailers to be exact. 100% of the sales of those cards they benefit the American Cancer Society. Lauren Kelly is showing us a great way to shop local, save money, save lives. Lauren, and this truly, there are so many businesses who participate every single year. You know, you think about 475 different retailers all over the greater Houston area, and you really cannot go wrong. The holiday shopping cart is back, and you need to get your hands on it. And here with more information, this is Diane. She's the holiday shopping cart 2021 co-chair. Now, you have it in your hand. I do. I need you to tell our viewers all about it, because it's never too early to stop holiday shopping. No, to never. Start. <laughs> Now's the time. This is the actual holiday shopping cart. Okay. The cart itself is on the back. 
uh, the booklet provides the merchants and restaurants that are participating. The cost. So today, I just want to make sure yeah. people know that we're in the River Oaks District today. We're at Francis Valentine, a beautiful store here. All of those are going to be labeled inside of this. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. And people can purchase it for how much? Seventy-five dollars at any of the participating um, merchants, and then at the website, which will be linked to later on. Um, all of this money benefits the local American Cancer Society, and with the monies raised, they can provide patient services, research funding, um, overnight lodging, different things like that. So, and those are just a few things yes. that you forget about while patients are going yes. through treatment at the American Cancer Society. And to put your hand on the local branch is even more heartwarming. Yes, it, it will all stay here locally. Uh, research is huge. So, uh, the amount Diane, when people do. walk into the stores, they're going to get an indicator with this bag right here. It just kind of lets you know that this store is participating, yes, right? Yes, this is the, the logo. Uh, you'll also see things. Everything's in our signature pink and green, and there Wonderful. are also many posters on the, on the doors. I love it. These guys have an annual sip and stroll event. It's actually the first one coming up on Saturday. I'm going to get some more details about it coming up a little bit later on the show, but you can't go wrong with sipping, strolling, shopping, all for a good cause. I'm going to toss it back to you, Derek and Courtney, in studio for now. It is fantastic. Not only are those retailers local, but there's a lot of national brands that are tied to that as well. And you're in one of the newest boutiques in River Oaks District. I love it. I can't wait to check in Courtney, with you again. Courtney, I know. You, oh, Lauren, <laughs> I need to run over. I love it. You Come on, girl. We're waiting for you. <laughs> She'll be there 42 minutes from now. All right, Lauren. We'll see you in a bit. Thank okay. you. When we come back, a preview of some of the best movies we can all look forward to at this year's Indian Film Festival of Houston. And how the founder of Houston's premier oddities in a cult market opened up her own brick and mortar in the Heights. Houston Life will be right back. With a fresh lineup of feature films, documentaries, and shorts, the Indian Festival of Houston returns this weekend for its 13th edition, celebrating and amplifying some of the most talented voices in Indian cinema. Festival founder and executive director Sutapa Ghosh joins us now with a preview of some of the films that will be shown this year. Congratulations, you can have the festival in person again. That's got to feel good. Thank you very much, Derek. Yeah, we are very excited. This is, you know, after an 18 or 19 month gap, uh, it's a huge thing to have it in person because that's the fun element of having a festival. You know, you can see the movies, you can meet the directors, do the Q&A, so that's, that's exciting. And we were chatting during the break. If you've never been to the festival, you got to go check it out because one of my favorite parts of going to any film festival is being able to have that question and answer session with the filmmakers after the films. I know we're going to get into the details in just a moment and some of uh, the different films you recommend recommend we go see this year, but it really sounds like in addition to the films being so good, the directors behind them, oh, they yeah. all have such fascinating stories. Yeah, each of them have a very, very, you know, fascinating story. Like we have a documentary called uh, Home Address, Ghar Ka Pata. It's a autobiographical journey of the director who had to move out of Kashmir, the state in India. Uh, when she was six and then when she travels back after 24 years how the entire thing has changed well and look at the, i mean the, the visuals in these films are so powerful uh each one again having its having different directors and different styles let's talk about the film bittersweet yes. uh and its director as well Yes, bittersweet, you know, it's a, again, it's a true story of a woman uh, still exist in the western part of uh, India that they have to compromise, they have to actually sacrifice their womb and, you know, otherwise they are going to be, you know, so going into the poverty because it's a labor thing they're using for with women still at this age and uh, it's behind a huge uh, cash, you know, sugarcane industry that, that's been still on. And again, the way these films are shot, it, it almost like, is like you have a front row seat uh, to this yeah. culture. And the festival circuit is so critical for filmmakers because this is their chance to showcase their labor of love. Right. And the director of Bittersweet, he, he has won uh, you know, a lot of awards internationally and nationally, Anant Mahadevan. He's a very, very uh, acclaimed actor and director. 
Another film uh, which you describe as heart-wrenching is called Womb, Women of My Billion. Yes, it's again a true story of Srishti Bakshi, the lady. She had a beautiful corporate job and she quit everything and went on to this uh, walk for 2,800 kilometers from extreme north of India to extreme south. And it uh, shows how the women are still, you know, uh, going through a uh, lot of crises like domestic violence and all kind of violences. My goodness, and, and the perfect time to screen a film like this given that October is Domestic Violence Awareness exactly. Month. That's it. That, that, that was our goal to make all this happen in the right time, right place. And we are blessed and we are in Houston and it's happening. Yeah, well, you nailed it on the timing for sure. So if people still want to purchase tickets to come to the event, we do have some details we can put on the screen right now. Again, this is the 13th Indian Film Festival of Houston, Friday and Saturday starting at 4 p.m. Asia Society uh, Texas Center and the screenings. So purchase your tickets and get on out there. We can't wait for this year's festival. And once again, congratulations on being able to hold it in person. Thank you very much. And we, I invite everybody to come and you know be part of the festival because it's in person this time. Sutapa Ghosh, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for your time. For tickets, movie listings, and more, you can visit our website, HoustonLife.tv. For now, let's check in with Courtney for the way the Strohs are stepping up their t-shirt game this postseason. Hey, Courtney. Hey, Derek. You know, after the break, KPRC2 sports reporter Vanessa Richardson joins us with a story of a local company who is shining bright on the diamond. Find out how you can rock some of the same looks as some Astros players. Plus, we're going to get a check of what is coming up for the news at the top of the hour, including, I know you all are thinking about it, how much longer these cooler temps are going to last. Houston Life is back in two minutes. Welcome back to Houston Life. Courtney and Derek back with you. <laughs> I have to sneeze. She's about to sneeze. It's okay. It happens to all of us. Don't worry. You press right here. You sneeze, I'll read the viewer comments. So today's question <laughs> was, how did you know when you found the one? Donna writes in, my heart raced at first glance. We met on Friday at my job, bumped into each other on Saturday, first date on Sunday, married after seven months, and been together since our first date 37 years next Oh, month. my word. See, that I'm is awesome. You, when you know, you know. I mean, I'm telling you, it's like lightning in a bottle, right? Eduardo Wa writes in, I always find the right one, only they don't think so. <laughs> oh, man. Eduardo, I feel your pain. I've been there before, too. Jesse writes in, told her, how does it feel to go on your last first date? I also told her on our date, you're the one. Luckily for me, she felt the same way, been married since. Oh, that's so sweet. So and Mick writes in, very simply, that, that tingly, tingly feeling. feeling. I agree. Very nice. Mick always has some really good comments. He does, for I sure. I know. All right, let's check in with Andy, Christine, and Justin for a look at what they have coming up at the top of the hour. Hello Hi guys. There. Hi. Yeah, you know, when I met Jesse four years ago, I was like, listen, I don't want to get married ever. And he was like, okay. <laughs> Guess who just got married a few weeks ago? Uh -huh. <laughs> He's like, okay, uh -huh. girl. See? All right. All right. The one. <laughs> I know. I love those stories. It's weird how that works. You know, there, there are times when, when Lady Smith and I will throw each other through a wall. And then, like, <laughs> two hours later, I'm like, how you doing? Lady Smith. Lady He's like, how you doing? Lady Smith. I can't live by without the, you. Hey, by the way, we got to give a shout out. It's her birthday today. Oh, oh happy birthday, birthday, birthday. Brandy. We will not reveal how old she is. Never. 25. Yes, there never, you go. 25 never looked better. 25 mm -hmm. plus and looking good. That's yeah. your story and you're sticking yes, with it. it. That's right. I know. And we've gotten to the age, too, where it's like, what do you want for your birthday? She's like, I want one of those always pants, you know? And it's like, <laughs> we want an air fryer, you know? <laughs> what? I don't do that. Don't buy that for her. Nothing Already says done. romance like an air fryer. Yeah, or oh. buy the air fryer and then get something else she's not expecting. Oh, yeah. I got all, there there are going to be some surprises when she comes home. How about home a ring? Find it. How about one of those, J-Man? Oh, States. boy. you just you been put on the spot, my friend. You know what? I'm going to get to the weather. <laughs> I'm the worst. I'm sorry. We are dishing up some good weather for her birthday, at least. There's that. All right, D-Shore, you and I are going to discuss. Okay, okay sure. sorry. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> anyway, it is beautiful out today, guys. Look at this. We've got beautiful weather. We're looking at temperatures that are generally still sitting in the mid to upper 70s out there. So uh, just a touch warmer today, but still very nice nonetheless. 81 out in Katy. That's our hot spot right now. Everybody else is in the mid 70s. So if you're headed on down to the juice box for the watch party this evening for the game, I don't think it's going to be any issue. Street Fest should be a lot of fun as well. Uh, do bring a jacket, though, or maybe, you know, the Astros sweater because it will be cool once again tonight. We've got some clouds off to the west of us in San Angelo, and that's 
said. So if we take the numbers, roll it through about 6 o'clock as you're heading in for the game, still mid-70s, and then slowly cooling off into the 60s. And then tomorrow morning, guys, this will be sort of our last really cool morning, so to speak, in the 50s. You see everybody mid-upper 50s, and then we'll slowly start to bring those numbers up just a hair as we get into the middle part of the week. So we'll talk about the warm-up. We've got some rain chances moving back in late week as well. But hopefully we can try to scoot that out of here quickly, and we'll get back to this nice fall weather. Because I don't know about y'all, but it was just Picture perfect all oh week. The gosh. best. Yes. Like it, it doesn't get any better than that. No, that's why, that's why we fight through summers. To get we yes. love October. Yes. Best <laughs> month in Houston. So good yeah. in. All right, Justin, thank you. Here's a look at some of the stories that we are working on for you this afternoon. Houston's former police chief, Art Acevedo, off the job in Miami. Now he's speaking out about his firing. He claims he was fighting corruption. His critics say he was a grandstander who clashed with the city's power brokers and said Miami was run by the Cuban mafia. Ahead, what could be next for Acevedo? Plus, the COVID pandemic is one of the factors contributing to the rise in popularity of a way to feel better. IV therapies are becoming all the rage, but there are questions about whether or not they work. The good, the bad, and the useful, that's coming up ahead. We see strange things coming out of Australia. Usually they have to do with animals, but this wild ride may have you shaking your head in confusion. A tractor, yes, a vehicle used for farming, leading police on a wild chase. What started it and how it all came to an end. I mean, really, how fast can those things exactly. go? Exactly. <laughs> it doesn't look like it's going very fast. Well, that yeah. My goodness. I don't know. Yeah, so stay tuned for that, guys. Okay. okay. Very curious. All right, guys, we'll see you at 4 o'clock. Justin, we can talk about rings at that point as well. All right, shifting gears now. There are so many ways you can show your Astros pride cheering on our Astros, but one of the simplest ways is just to wear a cool T-shirt, right? Absolutely. You know, Vanessa Richardson is in studio today with a story in a way that you can dress like the Astros players. I love this, Vanessa. Thank you. I'm rocking my Be Someone shirt right now. Players on pro sports teams usually wear team gear, but the Astros players have been wearing some creative, sometimes edgy t-shirts and tank tops throughout the season. It's from a company started by diehard Astros fans called Apollo Houston. Watch any Astros game and you may see the players wearing some non-traditional gear. It's probably from Apollo Houston, a brand started by local diehard Astros fans. So what we found that worked was the foundation, the community, the city, and the people. And that's what we built it around. And uh, it's been wild to see what's, what's kind of come to fruition. It started during the Astros sign-stealing scandal. Apollo made shirts that read H-Town versus everyone. Carlos Correa and Lance McCullers Jr. asked them for some merchandise. And Lance and Carlos had reached out. The H-Town versus everyone is kind of uh, what we zigged when everyone was zagging during the scandal when it broke. And I was like, hey, let's just, let's just roll into it. Let's, let's embrace it. And uh, they reached out and they're like, hey, can we, get, can we get these shirts? Their shirt that reads the franchise, a nod to Framber Valdez. Peace, love, and heaters for Ryan Stanick. Machete and chill for Martin Maldonado. The fact that the city is kind of rallied around us and being a small business and a local business, it's been huge and it's, it's bigger than us now. And seeing the players rock the gear, a dream come true for these lifelong Astros fans. It's, it's a testament to our team putting the work in, uh, having an idea. It's, it's cool to see that process play out and, and see where one thing can lead to an actual shirt and the guys wearing it. So the shirts are made by Push Productions in Tomball, so it is all totally local. Apollo Houston also does some podcasting and Twitch streaming, but the merchandise has really taken off and built their brand. The guys told me their goal is not necessarily to be Barstool Sports or anything like that. They just want to rep Houston. Courtney and Derek, these guys are so passionate, and to have Carlos Correa and Lance McCullers Jr. reach out to them, how cool is that? I mean, it just kind of legitimizes, you know, right. it kind of just validates basically what they're doing. Right, yeah. because once the players start noticing, mm -hmm. the rest is history. Yeah. yeah, well, it really is cool, too, that they were just a group of diehard fans and yeah. took their idea and ran with it. I love it. Absolutely. They're awesome. We'll have more on our website, click2houston.com. And that's what we just order them right there, yeah, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll put a link and, and we'll we'll let people know how you can get gear. And, and is the one you're wearing? That's yeah, this is too? this is kind of, this says Be Someone, which is, of course, the iconic uh, Houston logo and, and motto. And then you have the World the Series trophy. trophy. And then you have the astronauts. So. I know. Super cool. Uh, really cool.
creative, really edgy. Some are so edgy that we can't necessarily show them on television. Oh. But again, I think that's why the players like it. So it's really cool to see them rocking local business gear. I yeah. love it. All right. Thanks, Vanessa. Well, coming up on Houston Life, a look inside the magical Thorn and Moon Apothecary in the Heights and how it all came to be. Then the enchanting owner, Jessica Anderson, is live in studio to give us a lesson on some kitchen witchery when Houston Life returns. Have you ever been curious about the world of the supernatural and uncanny? Well, you'll definitely want to visit Thorn and Moon Apothecary in the Heights and perhaps stay for a spell. Well, after starting and running Houston's premier occult and oddities market since 2017, Thorn and Moon founder Jessica Anderson finally opened up her own brick and mortar shop that carries everything from wands to magical wares to fulfill all your witchy needs. an herbal apothecary and unique gift shop with supplies for magical practitioners, but also plenty of items for everyday people looking to add a little more magic in their life. When I was in high school, I found myself in a bookstore in the New Age section, and that just kind of opened a lot of doors to things that I had not realized existed before. And that's when I started dabbling in witchcraft and magic. And then as an adult, I continued my practice, but in the, what you would call the broom closet, where I kind of was very secretive about it. it wasn't until a few years ago, um, with the encouragement of some friends, that I came out of the broom closet and went public with, with my practice and with the start of the Thorn and Moon Market. I call it Houston's premier oddities and occult event. It's over three dozen vendors, artists, all kind of in the realm of magical, new age, occult, or oddities, or strange. I was wanting a local outlet to be able to sell wares and realizing there was not an event of its kind in Houston and decided to begin a event for all people who are interested in those things and not just feature our items that we made but support other local makers in the magical community. It just grew from there. So we started at Jessica's very first market at Thorny Moon and we've never missed a single market with her. This is what we've been doing for years with her. It's a great market. Um, there's nothing scary about what we do. We are people who are manifesting healing, love, abundance, and protection. And I, if you had told me 10 years ago that I would have an apothecary in the Heights, I would have told you you're crazy, but it's just the journey that this life has taken me on. I love that. Great story. Thorn and Moon owner Jessica Anderson is joining us now in studio to teach some kitchen witchery and her magical mulled wine recipe. It's great to see you. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I love your show so much. Oh my gosh, we're glad to meet you. And watching your story was so much fun. You did it. You totally did it. So yes, I pinch yourself. I manifested it for sure. We love it. So <laughs> mulled wine is on the menu today. Yes, mulled wine or spiced wine. Um, it's the fall season. Uh, throughout the holiday season, people enjoy, you know, pumpkin pie, spiced uh, cider, and wine. And what's uh, funny is, well, it's not funny. The uh, ingredients in mulled wine and a lot of our fall favorites are also the same kind of herbs and spices that go into uh, magical prosperity spells. Oh. So you can kill two birds with one stone by making a spiced mulled wine and putting your intention into it um, to attract abundance into your life. Oh, wow. I think we're always ready for mm -hmm. something like that. Let's talk about the ingredients because it seems easy enough to make, but what are you using? It's very easy. Uh, you need cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice, cloves, orange peel, lemon peel, and honey. If you're making cider, you don't need the honey. It's already sweet enough. Okay. Um, you will want to grind up your cinnamon sticks and your nutmeg. Um, so you'll want to grind those first. But what you will do is combine your ingredients and... I love that you have the whole spices in here too. Right. 
and you'll um, using a muslin cloth tea bag or I have cheesecloth here a couple layers of, of cheesecloth you make a little mulling pouch oh. so you add um, a few tablespoons of your spice blend and then tie it up you know, this would make a really good gift, too, like if yeah. you wanted to make a batch. And yes, the re my wanted. recipe makes four pouches, so you can make one for yourself and to give as gifts to others. We and like booing people right now, so this is a good boo gift. Booing <laughs> so, meaning like surprising them, yeah, right? With a, yeah, you, yeah, you just leave it. You've been booed. A ghost boo. Yeah. So you tie up your pouch, and then you add it to your, your wine. Um, over the stove top, you'll want to... Um, I already have one in here that's been steeping. Okay. But you'll um, stim simmer and steep for about 20 minutes. And then... And what kind of wine, Jessica, oh. does it matter? Uh, you'll want to use a bold red. Okay. Uh, I've picked a red blend to use today. Uh, any bold wine like... Um, Shiraz or Malbec will do. It doesn't okay. have to be anything fancy or expensive because the spices are going to overcome any subtleties in the wine. Okay. So you don't want to spend a, a lot of money. You can just get a cheap bottle. So when do you add the honey? Um, after, after, after you've uh, steeped. Okay. You'll add your honey. Oh, wow. So you're adding quite a bit of honey. Yeah, about a, a, I think it's about a third a cup for recipe. Okay. A third to half a cup. And we're tight on time, but we would love to try it. Oh, we're going to taste it. Yes. <laughs> we'll get it in there. And then this is in. perfect, I think, now, too, because it's cool outside. It, I know. It's it's perfect weather for it. Listen, while you are serving that up, we do want to tell our viewers that Thorn and Moon will be hosting their next magical market on Sunday, November 6th. The event goes from 6 to 11 p.m. at uh, Raven Tower and is free to attend for all ages. That is a Saturday coming up. Okay. It's served hot. Wonderful. Cheers. Oh my gosh. To Cheers prosperity. To prosperity. Ooh, Jessica, thank you so lovely. much. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you. It smells you. really, really good. For more information, the full mold wine recipe, you can head to our website, HoustonLife.tv. Now we're going to check in with Joe, mm -hmm. who has information that will Yum. have you smiling. Hey, Joe. Hey, guys. That's right. Now, if you've dealt with a lifetime of dental problems, you know it can impact your health and your overall mood. But there's good news at Nubia Dental Implant Center located in West Chase. They are changing lives through the power of a beautiful smile. And the transformation only takes 24 hours. <music> Everyone wants that perfect smile. Not only does it help you build confidence, but it also impresses others. So of course here at Nubia Dental Implant Center, they're helping put that perfect smile on your face. I'm here with Alex to talk a little bit more about this incredible treatment that you guys have and how people can come and get it for themselves. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having us, Joe. Really excited to be in Houston. It's really exciting to hear about this process here. For, for those who want to know, tell us a little bit more about the center. Yeah, so this is actually our sixth center. We have centers in Utah, Colorado, second one in Texas now. Mm. Here in the uh, Newbie Dental Implant Center, we actually give people their permanent smile in 24 hours. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it's a really life changing transformation literally overnight. And I know a lot of different centers, they take eight to 10 months to even try and get that to happen for people. So, to make this happen in 24 hours, absolutely incredible. So, when people walk in the door from their first visit, how does it all work? Break it down for us. Yeah, so they first come in to a complimentary consultation. They meet with the smile consultant who goes over all their options. We make sure they're a candidate for dental implant treatment. Not everyone's a candidate, so we want to make sure that medically they're qualified. And then they proceed to get treatment done. They come in for surgery, and the next day they get their permanent smile put in. Literally overnight, relative to the teeth in a day, eight to 10 months process, we literally do it overnight for them. Wow, now this is making me smile. So I know that there are certain benefits that people can get from having that 24 hour process. Break down the benefits for us. For sure, so how our you know, patent proven process, we actually have a standard procedure that helps the implants heal faster and last longer. Right, we want the process to last as long as it can. Secondly, too, they can get back to the benefits even faster. So chewing, they can start chewing. Next day, they can, you know, have that custom smile. It literally is customized. We make it overnight <laughs> so that they can go out and start living their life the next day. A lot of our before and afters are literally the next day after surgery. Wow, so they can really start eating whatever they want right away. Not technically everything. We do like to have a little healing process, <laughs> right? They do have undergo a little surgery. However, though, generally relative to, you know, getting a teeth in a day denture, they're able to eat a lot more like expansive selection of foods overnight relative to, hey, eight to 10 months, you're eating a lot of soft foods, liquid diet. 
pretty challenging process where with us, you can get back to eating what you want a lot quicker. So I know a lot of people are gonna to wanna to know how they can have this, how can they make it happen for them? What is your preferred candidate for this process? Do you have an yeah. age range or a certain type of person that will come to receive this treatment? Yeah, so it's not necessarily age-based. Like our average patient is 61, obviously just because of the deterioration of our teeth, we only get one set in our lives. However, though, we've seen a myriad of patients. Um, it's people, you know, that they're past the point where restorative dentistry can get them back to optimum health. So like, you know, you have your general dentist, there's a cavity, the root canal, the crown. People that are dentalists don't have teeth or indentures already. People that are missing a couple teeth here and there where they just want it all back at one time. That's who needs to come to Newby Dental Implant Center. We've seen the incredible transformations. Yeah. Talk about that and how does it make you feel being able to see them smile and knowing that you were able to put that smile on their face? It's honestly the best part of being involved in this kind of industry. You know, people come in, they have a lot of struggle because of their teeth, right? They have a lot of emotional heartache. They have a lot of, you know, medical issues because their digestive system is to the food. Literally overnight, you see someone's life change. And like, there are very little events in life that you can say that that happens. It really it's a phenomenal, is. I have chills. It's a phenomenal process. And I'm sure they get chills too the minute they see their beautiful smile in the mirror. Absolutely wonderful and great job that you're doing, providing people back with that confidence that they need by having a perfect smile. So thanks again for all of that information. Yeah, thanks Joe, thanks for having us. So make sure if you wanna come and get that beautiful smile, come on down here to the Nubia Dental Implant Center to get that confidence that you deserve. Yeah, some really incredible work that they do there. Now, you can also go to NuviaSmiles.com or call 832-400-4562 to find out if you are a candidate for those dental implants. Now, let's check in with Lauren Kelly, who's shopping and supporting the American Cancer Society this afternoon. Hey, Lauren, how's it going out there? Hey, Joe, that's right. I got my big smile on right here. I'm shopping for a cause. The holiday shopping cart is back, and you don't want to miss this. You guys got to get your hands on one. It all benefits the American and Cancer Society. More details. We're live from the River Oaks District doing some shopping today. What do you think about this bag or this one when Houston Life returns? Definitely the gold. Gold. Now, you might think that starting now for holiday shopping is too early, but it's not. It's already halfway through October, and the holiday shopping cart is back. And for only $75, you can shop at over 400 Houston area retailers while giving back 100% to the American Cancer Society. And we've been hanging out in the River Oaks District today. I've been doing a little shopping. Oh, John, wow, what do you it. think of this bag versus my leopard printed bag? I, I feel like, why do you even choose? Get them both. <laughs> Get them both. Get them both. John Pearson, you've been doing so much shopping with me today. <laughs> kind of guiding me in the right direction. I love that we're here in the River Oaks District. We're at Francis Valentine, brand new store, only been open a month. Brand new, only been open a month, and obviously how important the Houston, the holiday shopping card is to Houston, they had to be a part of it. Absolutely. We so, have, yep, we have over 20 brands that are at River Oaks District that are actually participating in this. What I love about the River Oaks District is that it's such a beautiful shopping area. You can walk around, there's places to eat, and this shopping card is good at a lot of them. And we picked up earlier the little indicator, the bag that shows you which stores are participating. But this one has a lot of really great stuff that you can get some good deals on. You do. I mean, Francis Valentine, if you look around, it's just a bunch of color getting ready for the holidays. You can look at this piece here. All of these are original. It's something that you would never get anywhere else. And I think that's really what the River Oaks District does well. Um, John, I have to mention the Sip and Stroll event because we didn't get to it earlier, but we got to tell our viewers it's happening this Saturday. It's going to be from 12 noon to 2 p.m. And let's just say, come out, have a good time, do some shopping for a cause, right? Absolutely. Please come early. We're actually starting a farmer's market that will start at 10 and it's going to be in combination with the Sip and Stroll. So love Wonderful. to see you on Saturday. Thank you. I'm going to borrow some bags and some shoes for the event, okay? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> All right, if you guys want more details on how to get your hands on the holiday shopping card, just log on to HoustonLife.tv. I've got a lot more shopping to do and a lot more of this and a lot more of this. Now I got to work on the feet. Back to you guys in the studio. My eyes are all on that sweater behind you, Lauren. I love it. I want one of everything too. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right, Lauren, thanks. Have fun out there. After the break, a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show, including a Grammy-winning artist chatting about their brand new album. And as we head to break, let's check in with Kevin Frazier for a look at what's coming up on Entertainment Tonight, including the possible conclusion to a streaming favorite. Hey, Kevin.
Derek and Courtney tune into ET tonight for Courtney Kardashian and Travis Barker's engagement. We'll tell you how it all went down. Plus, our interview with Jason Sudeikis before his big SNL return. Will next season be Ted Lasso's last? We hope not. All right, what he just told us, you don't want to miss. That's tonight at 6.30 right here on KPRC2. But don't move. Houston Life will be right back. Tomorrow on Houston Life, the must-have items for any diaper and toddler bag. And once again, it is HL Obsessions Day. Courtney and I will share some of our favorite local products and, of course, promo codes to help you save money just in time to kick off holiday shopping. Season. I know. We're going to have some great promos, too. So that's going to do it for us today. Let's check in with Andy and Christine for the News at 4. Yeah, great to see you guys. You too. Have a wonderful evening, and we'll see you tomorrow on Houston Life.